Hey, my name is Eric Nelson. I'm an engineering manager with Migration Engineering, and we've worked on several projects within the container migration um, space, specifically with Kubernetes and Red Hat OpenShift. And um, Migration Toolkit for Red Hat OpenShift is our latest endeavor. Uh, it's called MT Row, and today I want to be sh I want to show off an early alpha demonstration of using that tool to do a stateless migration of a um, toy workload. Um, one of the pr previous projects that we worked on was called the MTC, um, and this was a tool that was really designed for cluster administrators to do mass cluster evacuations of workloads, and as such, it required a really high degree of privilege that otherwise is not going to be accessible to most application owners. And one of the requests that we really got was, hey, I really want um, to delegate the work of a migration out to my application owners themselves to do, rather than me doing this mass cluster evacuation. So that, that's what this tool is designed to help people do. So you can kind of think of it as a layered approach. Underneath it's got a CLI tool called Crane that um, helps you, that's sort of the engine of actually driving the migration. Uh, on top of that, we've built a plugin for the OpenShift console uh, that I'll be showing. Um, and then it's all deployed via an operator. So that's a good place to start here. So um, let me switch over to my terminal and we'll take a look at the installation process. So here we are in my terminal. Um, up top, I've got an OpenShift 4.10 cluster, and then on the bottom, um, there's a 4.10 cluster. And then on the bottom, I've got an OpenShift 4.9 cluster. So um, I've got a uh, toy workload that's inside of this um, 4.9 cluster that's gonna serve as my source cluster. It's called Nginx Example Stateless. And we'll take a look at what that's uh, made up of. So it's got a deployment. Um, there's a pod that's executing Nginx. And then I've got a route that um, allows me to actually hit the page. This doesn't have any PVCs, so it is stateless. Um, we do have some stateful variants of this, but I'll be showing that in the next demonstration. So the first thing we want to do is uh, this is the MTK operator. Um, I've got that exposed to OLM via catalog source. Um, this has gone through several name iterations, so that will eventually turn into MT row. But today it's called MTK operator. You can consider them the same. And then OLM um, can see that based on the presence of this package manifest in the marketplace. So if we pop over to my console, I go to the operator hub and I type in MTK. That's going to show my OpenShift crane, and then I'm going to install the operator. So um, this is pretty plain. It's a very simple one. Uh, it's going to be installed into the OpenShift migration namespace. And then one thing to point out here is the console plugin. So the console plugin is a new feature of OpenShift where it actually allows you to embed a UI into the OpenShift console itself. This is in contrast to MTC, which was a separate UI. So um, if I can go ahead and enable the plugin here, uh, we'll get started and we'll install the operator. Okay, so while this installs, I'll just talk a little bit about what the operator is doing. So in OLM, we've marked a dependency upon a project called OpenShift Pipelines. This is based on Tekton upstream. So that's a Kubernetes native way to run pipelines of um, sequences of tasks. And so that's actually how you compose a migration with uh, uh, MT row. Um, in addition to that, we're gonna get several other components that the operator installs of ours including uh, the dynamic plugin, uh, a proxy service that allows us to speak with the source cluster that you configure, and um, all of the cluster tasks that we've composed that wrap Crane in order to do the migration. So if we take a look at the operator here, it's pretty plain. Uh, it's got a basic uh, um, operator config here. These will in the future be configurable, but right now it's just a CR that we're going to create in order to install everything. So if we take a look back in the uh, project, set OpenShift migration to our active namespace. You can see we've got the plugin, uh, our MTK operator, OpenShift pipelines. I've got another Tekton webhook, and then I've got the proxy service that's gonna help us talk to our source cluster as well. At this point, I think we're gonna take a look at the cluster tasks. Um, So if I search for Crane, there's actually a lot that comes with OpenShift pipelines, but our cluster tasks have been installed and you'll see the various tasks that ultimately will end up as the steps um, that are part of the pipeline that will get created once we walk through the UI's wizard. So let's start by creating a namespace. Um, I'm Eric and I want to migrate to my Eric MT row namespace.
This here is the developer view uh, or perspective um, of the new OpenShift console. So currently my active project is OpenShift migration. I want to switch over to MT row. And if we go to the add screen, um, if you're already familiar with this or you're not familiar with this, you're not going to notice a difference here, but we've actually added this card as a, as a function of the plugin SDK that allows us to add an entry. So we're going to import from cluster. And now we're actually looking at our dynamic plugin and you can see that it's actually embedded inside of the rest of the, the console. Um, so here we've got a, a configuration that allows me to set up the source cluster. So it's going to be the cluster coordinates plus the credentials. Right now it's just a series of fields, but um, uh, we're going to be adding onto this a, a credential management. So that's a little bit more ergonomic and secure. So for now, uh, what I'm going to do is go get the cluster coordinates for my source cluster. So if I do a cluster info, and then I copy that link to the API server, add that in here, and then I need to add an OAuth token. So if I insert that, you can see that it verifies that it can actually talk to that server. I'm going to select my um, example stateless project name and it confirms that that's present. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to add a OAuth token for us to be able to communicate with the destination cluster. Hit next here. You can see it's communicating through the proxy with the source cluster to give me a little bit of information about the source uh, namespace that I've selected. I've got a pod and services, but um, I don't have any PVCs, so this is a stateless migration. The next screen, this will in the future have uh, some configuration ability around my PVCs, like changing storage classes and resizing. For now, we're just doing a stateless migration, so uh, we're going to skip forwards past this. Next, I've got some uh, configuration settings for my pipeline. So I can give my pipeline a name, let's call it Eric Stateless Cutover, and I have the opportunity to start that immediately or create the pipeline for future execution. Then I've got an opportunity to review and edit the uh, resulting pipeline and pipeline run here. This is all sort of subject to change because this is early alpha, but uh, right now we can review that. So here we have the pipeline that's been generated by the wizard, the Tecton pipeline. Um, it's actually a pipeline run that's uh, sitting in a pending state waiting to be executed. So as you can see, um, the migrations are made up of a sequence of tasks that are organized um, in order or even in parallel. So you can imagine um, a parallel transfer of a, of a set of uh, PVCs. But um, here we're doing stateless migration. So um, we're starting with a generate uh, cube config task. So what that does is basically take your uh, credentials and coordinates that were provided during the wizard and create some um, cube configs that are then placed onto a workspace that's shared amongst all of the um, cluster tasks so that it will have access to your clusters. Um, and then next up, we've got export. So um, Crane CLI is the engine that actually drives a migration underneath the covers. It's a CLI tool um, and it's made up of three core commands. So the first one is export, and what that does is uses the discovery API in order to um, figure out what instances of resources you actually have inside of your namespace, and then it extracts those resources to disk without manipulating them in any manner. In this case, they're going to end up in a PVC workspace uh, so that they're persisted amongst the tasks. Um, next up is transform. So uh, one of the core principles of Crane is that it's idempotent, so that um, if you rerun it over and over again, there won't be uh, side effects, um, it's non-destructive. And um, with transforms, uh, it doesn't actually apply a transform. What it does is output uh, a collection of JSON patches that represent the mutation that is required in order to decouple your um, workload from it, the environment that it was originally in. And it does this using a plugin model. So we have an OpenShift plugin. However, uh, it's kind of interesting because it will allow for um, the building and codif codifying of logic uh, to address kind of generic problems that folks come across as they uh, perform their migrations and then they can be published and um, installed uh, with Crane CLI. So in this case, we're just gonna use the OpenShift plugin uh, to do things like strip routes of their host specifics so that they can be regenerated if they are generated routes, um, things like that. So transform, uh, again, will output a collection of uh, JSON patch files and those get stashed into the workspace. Um, and then next, we're going to apply those mutations. So those mutations get applied to the raw 
manifests that were exported during the export task. Uh, and the result is a cluster agnostic um, ma Kubernetes manifest that represents your workload um, that's ready to be imported into a cluster or even committed to a Git repository and then integrated with something like Argo CD uh, for a CD system and a, pipe, a deployment pipeline. Um, the next task, task is customize init. So uh, with customize, um, we use customize to layer back in cluster specifics. So in this case, we actually want to layer back in the names, the destination namespace. So you can see here that I actually want it to end up in Eric MT Rose project. So that, that's going to get layered in. Um, and other, you can imagine other uh, usage for customize, including things like layering back in node selectors if you've got a specific node um, topology, uh, resource quotas, those types of things. And then finally, we're going to run a cube cuddle apply command. So that's actually just going to run an apply um, against the resources in order to create them in my destination cluster. Um, However, uh, one of the benefits from using Tecton is that you can see this is really um, flexible for change so that we'd be able to bolt in new tasks easily and compose um, different pipelines. Um, it wouldn't be hard to imagine popping off that last task and then adding like a git commit and then a, uh, another task that integrates that with Argo and has Argo actually uh, deploy it. So here we've started the pipeline. Um, it was sitting in a pending state and I've kicked it off by removing it from the pending state. Um, and you can see um, we can start to watch the logs as the tasks progress. So we're currently in the cube config generation. We can monitor the events here. Uh, we can take a look at the task runs and um, the generators have finished. So we've got the export task beginning. So if we take a look back at the cube config generator, you'll see some nicely formatted output for what was actually done here. Um, we organized our cube contexts and uh, generated that cube config and passed that along to the export task. I'll resize that so we can see a little bit here. So what export is doing, you can see the output from crane export. This is interrogating the discovery API in order to understand exactly what resources are in use in the source namespace. And then it goes and exports those into a um, known location for transform to be able to generate its uh, mutations. So transform's kicking off. We'll switch over to that tab. Um, we can see it, that all those JSON patches got um, generated and written out to disk for each of our resources. Um, if we take a look at apply now, which has started, it's picking up those JSON patches and applying those mutations to the raw uh, manifests that were exported. And then next, we're going to run through cube, uh, customize a net. Um, so this is where we're layering back in some of the specifics, like the namespace that we want it to end up in. And then finally, we're just going to run a cube cuddle apply um, against that. So we're going to bring, and then we're going to uh, overlay the customizations as well. So you'll see the uh, output from that task here. And if we take a look, we can see the uh, created resources, including my deployment and my route for Nginx. So those were brought over from the source. And we can see that we've got all green tasks. Um, however, one of the cool things about using Tecton is that we can leverage all of the nice failure uh, handling that's here. And then we can even rerun things, uh, rerun failed tasks uh, in order to um, re-execute them should they be transient. Or you can go fix your error and then rerun it. Let's switch over to the administrator view uh, so we can take a look at the pods and just verify that things made it over OK. Um, it's probably better to look at the deployment. So I've got my Nginx deployment. One of those pods is up. And then if I go take a look at my routes, you can see that it regenerated my route uh, so that I've got the new cluster host here. So, and here's my Nginx application. Thanks so much for watching. Um, next up, we're probably gonna be showing a stage and cutover workflow to be able to uh, migrate the majority of your data while you've got your source applications up and then um, quiesce them and then do a final cutover migration in order to reduce your downtime. Uh, we can be reached in the pound conveyor channel in um, the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, otherwise, please leave a comment um, and I, I can follow up uh, with an email address should you have any questions. Thanks very much.